Last week we had a mortgage settlement. Uh, we get $26 billion and it appeared that the banks were giving up $26 billion in order to uh, make sure that they were not prosecuted on clear crimes on the issue of robo signing where they would foreclose on people's house without having the proper documentation. We had them dead to rights on that issue and they were worried about not just civil litigation but possible criminal penalties. And so they don't have to worry about it anymore. But uh, last week we were telling you that the issue was a little mixed because there was some good news and bad news in the settlements. The good news was that we could still uh, do a False Claims Act in California. The uh, mortgage-backed securities investigation in New York continues. You could still do securitization claims, etc. There were still a lot of avenues left open to the investigators. So that was good news and we we're going to get some relief to homeowners. Now, not a lot, but at least it was some amount of money. Well, uh, now there is a conclusion on whether it was a good deal or a bad deal overall. That conclusion is reached by some people like um, uh, Eve Smith, uh, who has been writing brilliantly about this on Naked Capitalism, Matt Taibbi, Michael Hilsick at the LA Times, and myself. The conclusion is it was a bad deal. Why? Because, first of all, you know how much the banks are actually paying? They're not paying $26 billion. They're only paying $5 billion. And by the way, of that $5 billion, only $1.5 billion goes directly to the homeowners. $3.5 billion goes to the states for regulatory uh, you know, uh, results of the, of the fraud, et cetera, the way that they got to deal with it. But already, a lot of the governors, the Republican governors, of course, led by Scott Walker in Wisconsin, have said, no, 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 I'm going to take my portion of the money and use it to, put up, uh, to patch up the hole in our deficit so later I can claim to be a great fighter of the deficit uh, even though I just took money that was supposed to go to the homeowners and used it for my own political purposes. So don't even celebrate about the five billion. But how about the other 21 billion? Where's that coming from? Well, it turns out that that is largely coming from your pension fund. What? How did that happen? Well, because the great uh, three card Monty trick here is that the banks don't even hold the mortgages anymore. The banks are the ones that service the mortgages, meaning they're the ones that do the foreclosing, but they're really representing the investors that they already sold the mortgages off to. Who are those investors? Well, their 401ks, their pension funds, and others, right? But it's largely the people who are holding pensions across the country. They're the suckers who got left with the bill. So now, those guys have to take a haircut. Those guys have to give up an extra $21 billion that goes towards paying down the principal, et cetera, of some of these mortgages. So it's not the banks. And by the way, if the banks never owned the mortgages anyway, not that they didn't ever own it, they owned it for a brief period of time before they sold it off to the investors, why did they care? Why did they continue to foreclose on these homes? Because it turns out that the banks, because of the way the, their incentive structure is set up, made more money by foreclosing on homes than they did by modifying the loans. Now the thing is, the investors actually get hurt by that. Every time you foreclose on a house, the investors on average lose $60,000 on that property. It's a terrible deal for the investors. But the banks kept doing it anyway. They're like, haha, you made a mistake of trusting us to service your mortgages, and we get paid more to foreclose. So sad day for you, the guy in the house, sad day for the investor, I'm going to foreclose. Now, okay, finally we got them to stop doing that, but again, the guys who are going to pay the bill are the guys holding all those. Uh, mortgage-backed securities in your pension fund, okay? So when you look at it that way, the banks didn't pay that much at all. And in fact, we were, you know, one of the questions was, why is it applied to so little homes? Because right now there are 11 million homes underwater. And this applies to about a million of them, at most 2 million. Why is that? Because most of the homes have mortgages backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And they are not part of this deal. So. You know who, uh, by the way, has to pay the bill for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac? You guessed it, the U.S. taxpayer, because we had to take them over because of their gross incompetence. So in the end, Fannie Mac and Freddie Mae uh, will not renew uh, your loans. They will not refinance them. They will not reduce principal. So those homes, the great majority of them, don't get any benefit. The ones that do get the benefit, it comes from the pensions, not from the banks. And what do the banks get in return? They get to skate on the most obvious criminal violations in this robo-signing deal, in the whole mortgage deal. Now look, the fraud that happened regarding the mortgage-backed securities is actually much larger than the fraud in the robo-signing, okay? 
After they did the giant fraud that sank the economy, they just wanted to hurry up and foreclose on the houses. That's when they did the robo-signing mess. But the robo-signing was easier to prove until we just gave it away. And now we can't prosecute them on that. And a great point made by Eve Smith was, well, normally what prosecutors do is they take the easiest thing to prove and they use it as leverage to get the banks or whoever they're going after to agree to other charges. Well, now they've lost that leverage, so it's going to be even harder to prosecute. And a lot of the statute of limitations on these fraud is already running out. So the worst fraud that happened with mortgage-backed securities in 06, 07, it's already too late. We can only start looking at mortgages that happened in 2008 after the scandal started to wind down. We got screwed in 18 different ways. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? These banks, I mean, they, they have us by the balls, man, uh, for a number of reasons. One, because they bought our politicians, so our politicians don't represent us. They represent them. They represent the banks. And then number two, they've gotten Tim Geithner and then accordingly, President Obama to believe that if the banks go under, like if you do anything against the banks, they will go under because their situation is that fragile, which by the way is somewhat true because Tim Geithner knows those banks have always been bankrupt. If you, know, if you actually did mark the market uh, accounting on the banks, they're gone, they're obliterated, right? But they put a Band-Aid on it and pretended they were healthy, right? And, they, and they've convinced them on the second part, that if, hey, you know what? If the banks go under, then everybody goes under. That, hey, you know what? Everybody's doing short-term lending. You can't get the uh, GE and all these other companies. Can't get financing from the banks to pay their bills. And the global economy collapses. Well, isn't that a neat little trick? So they're too big to fail because the whole global economy is centered around them. And hence, they could rob you of anything they like. They could break any law. And at the end, they get a slap on the wrist, $5 billion. Compared to the money they made robbing us, it's a joke. 